You know, it's very easy nowadays to find something wrong with a game and say that it's the worst game ever and whoever made it should be canceled and forgotten about. People on the internet do it all the time. Personally, I'm an optimist. I like to try and find positives in everything, especially my video games. But there are still some games that I cannot stand. And one of those games is Heart of Darkness on the original PlayStation. I hated this game when I first completed it for the show and I have not been looking forward to playing it again. But you know what? Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe the game wasn't too graphically violent to be rated E for everyone. Maybe it does intertwine gameplay and storytelling perfectly, like everyone says. Maybe I will like it this time, but probably not. Hey everyone, and welcome back to another brand new episode of The Completionist New Game Plus, where I am re-completing the first 120 games I ever featured right here on my channel. Today, we are revisiting one of my least favorite games I have ever completed. In fact, it's only one of three games that I ever gave the rating of Burn It To before I changed it into Donate It. But Misery loves company, and today I am accompanied once again by the man who suffered through this game with me last time, Cat Icarus. Thank you once again for joining us today, Caddy, all the way via satellite from England. Caddy, can you hear me? Caddy? Caddy? I think the, the connection's off, guys. Can we get a... Caddy! Caddy! No, the connection's perfect. I'm just pissed that you're making me play Heart of Darkness again. Oh. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. But hey, at least we get to do it together, right? 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 Yeah. Yes. You can't talk about Heart of Darkness without talking about the man behind the game, Eric Chahi, a French game developer who's famous for his work in the cinematic platformer genre. That's the genre that places a larger emphasis on characters with more fluid and realistic movements instead of crazy speed and jumps like in Mario. The best examples of this are with the original Prince of Persia and even the Oddworld series, which are some of my favorite games of all time. Chahi is most famous for the first game he directed, Out of This World. <laughs> or another world, as it is more commonly known everywhere else other than the United States. Did you just forget that I'm not from your country, Gerard? You know there are other countries out there, right? You gotta be more inclusive. It tells the story of a scientist who is trapped on a distant planet and must find his way back to Earth. This game was a big deal because Chahi just did everything by himself and the only thing he didn't do was compose the music. This guy is a freaking genius and it showed in the game. With its epic and dramatic story almost entirely through gameplay, another world became a critical and commercial success. This game influenced a ton of future game developers, including Suda51 and Hideo Kojima. If it wasn't for this game, we wouldn't have some of the best and most interesting games of all time. Thank you, Mr. Chahi. After making a game that influential, you have got to check out the creator's next game. And the spiritual successor of Another World is the game we're looking at today, Heart of Darkness. It is a cult classic on the PS1 that many critics said carries on the legacy left by Another World and is just as much of a masterpiece. And I'm sure that Heart of Darkness tells just as epic a story as Chohi's previous masterpiece. That's right, Heart of Darkness follows a young boy named Andy. His dog, Whiskey, is captured by aliens and it's up to him to go and save him. Sounds complex, sophisticated, and heartwarming. Oh, there's a bit more to it than just that. You jump, you shoot, and you climb through areas pulled straight out of Star Wars. There's also a generically evil Sauron clone, Hispanic Jar Jar Binks, and a terrifying teacher that looks like Judge Doom from Who Framed Roger Rabbit and acts like Trunchbull from Matilda. Jesus Christ. Come on, Caddy, stay positive. I'm gonna need your support to make it through this one one more time. I just have to beat this game once on the hardest difficulty, and then we're done! There's nothing else needed for completion, and should only take a few hours. Alright, fine. This game may be a pain in the ass, but at least it's a short pain in the ass. Heart of Darkness has become a cult classic for two reasons. It's insanely violent death animations, and the way it integrated gameplay and story. However, the narrative and the gameplay feel like tonal opposites, working against each other more than they create a unified experience. Heart of Darkness tries to set itself up as a fun children's adventure, like Never Ending Story or The Goonies. The cutscenes show that you're an average kid in a fantastical situation, and it's full of fun and adventure and danger. But once you start actually playing the game, there's just danger. Everything in this game is out to kill you. 
Some are pretty obvious, like all of the creepy shadow monsters or gigantic Venus flytraps, and others take you completely by surprise. I can't tell you the amount of times I got killed by things that just looked like they were part of the background or just happened to be right next to me on a new screen. That there hardly seems fair. Other cinematic platformers handle this much better. In Oddworld Abe's Odyssey, for instance, you can actually tell which items are going to kill you, and while things do rush at you, this is much less frequent than it is in Heart of Darkness. Fortunately, you do have a weapon early on that helps deal with enemies, a lightning gun that Andy built himself. However, this isn't the most effective weapon, and you lose it very early on in the game. This sucks because it's actually pretty cool. A gun that shoots Palpatine lightning. It's awesome. Not only is it freaking rad, but it helps connect the fantastical tone of the cutscenes with the gameplay. Instead, you spend most of your time awkwardly avoiding enemies and hazards that move much faster than you do. You try to react to what you can see, but the realistic controls are just sluggish. The enemies will be all over you before you even know what's even going on. Now look, I read a bunch of reviews and retrospectives of Heart of Darkness before I even picked it up again. All of them declared how this game was a perfect blend of gameplay and storytelling. But it really isn't. Not only are the story and gameplay fighting each other tonally, but they're just really, really bad. And it never feels like it's your fault. It feels like the game is hard just so its short runtime will feel worthwhile. And it's really not. I also found the cutscenes really jarring, not just tonally, but graphically. The FMV is not bad for the time, but it feels completely separate from the graphics when you're playing the game. Another World executed this much better because it didn't really have cutscenes, the story happened within the gameplay, and that made the experience feel like the cinematic part was actually playing the game, not watching a movie and then playing the game. Heart of Darkness fails at this and flops over. You'll reach the end of the forest level and suddenly the camera perspective and graphical quality changes. Suddenly you're in a cutscene flying around with your new alien pal Amigo just laughing and having a jolly old time. What's your name? Amigo. Amigo what? Amigo, amigo. But then you're back at playing the game where you're climbing a wall and a giant space worm pulls Andy into its hole and you watch as his feet slowly stop kicking and hang lifelessly from the worm's hovel. <laughs> I just watched a child get devoured by a wild animal. And that's not the only brutal death you get to see. You get to see Andy as he gets his back broken, crushed into a sticky puddle by pillars, vaporized so that he's just a shoe, and even drown. Realistically. The cutscenes may have the tone of a Pajama Sam game, but the deaths are much more reminiscent of the recent Tomb Raider games. Don't worry though, the childlike cutscenes also have their share of grotesque violence. You get to see a moist, hairless anteater man get steamrolled by a boulder until the pupil pops off of his eye. Holy f the fact that this game is rated E for everyone still baffles me to this day. Yes, there's no blood or gore or anything like that, but that somehow makes it worse. Mortal Kombat may be insanely violent, right? But it's so ridiculous that you know there's no way it can be real. Heart of Darkness is just realistic enough in these moments that you can't help but think you just watched a snuff film. And you're gonna see these snuff films often. This game is hard as hell and requires a lot of trial and error. And you're going to die again and again and again until you finally figure out how a section times out perfectly. Yes, the game is short, only five to 10 hours depending on how familiar you are with it, but it feels so much longer because of how many times you replay a section. Now look, this can be fun in games like Super Meat Boy or even Mario vs. Donkey Kong, but the slower and more realistic controls of Heart of Darkness make this process feel absolutely like a chore. Compare this once again to Abe's Odyssey. In most situations, there are a ton of tactics to try, whether it be possession of other enemies, game speak, or using the environment to your advantage along with the platforming. This makes the game never feel repetitive, but in Heart of Darkness, you mostly just have to run, jump, or climb, and just pray that you'll survive. Wow, you really like the Odd World series, Caddy. Dude, I really, really do. <laughs> Since all you have to do is beat this game once, there really is no completion bonus. You beat the game, you get the final cutscene, which does the classic trope of, it was all a dream, or was it? That's not entirely true. After the credits end, you get told to put on your 3D glasses that came with the game, and you watch the final battle cutscene in 3D. That's kind of cool, right? Well, look, I don't have 3D glasses, and the scene is now in black and white, so no. <sighs> Good point, though. At least it's more like you're watching Logan. Oh, 
God, this game still sucks. I hated this game when I first completed it all those years ago. I hated the controls, I hated the story, and especially I hated the creepy FMV and voice acting. I was hoping that taking some time away from all this would maybe soften my opinion on it, but no, the game is just as bad as I remember it. Then you should check out the official Heart of Darkness website. It was designed in 1997 and features a bunch of random content, including the Heart of Darkness Christmas card. Oh my God, you know what, that's it. Heart of Darkness is officially worse than the last time I played it. It's so bad that it ruined Christmas. When we completed Heart of Darkness, there were 285 deaths, which is especially a lot for how short this game was. 37 unique death animations that feel more violent and mature than anything Mortal Kombat and Grand Theft Auto have to offer. 53 screams I let out because of how goddamn frustrated I got replaying the same sections multiple times. 10 people who worked on this game. This is eight more people than Chorhi's previous game, yet somehow this game feels eight times worse. Eight hours of total playtime. And one dog named Whiskey, because this game is worth Jack. You know what? Nice pun. Thanks. I didn't try. Whew! This was a rough one. Not because it was particularly difficult, but because its difficulty didn't feel based on skill at all. Not to mention that the deaths were unbelievably gruesome for an E-rated game, and the tone and story and gameplay felt incredibly disjointed from each other. I don't know. What do you think, Caddy? I love cinematic platformers. They do such a great job of sucking you into the world and making you care about the main character because of the world building and the controls, the realism of it. It makes you connect with the character a lot more. But Heart of Darkness just feels clunky and superficial. There are a ton of other games that accomplish this a lot better, like Another World or even the Odd World series. Speaking of which, are you going to complete an Odd World game anytime soon? You know there's a new one coming out this- So with that in mind guys, we give this game our new completionist rating of... Donate, Donate it. Burn it. Donate it. That's all the time we have for today, guys. So please, as always, let us know what you thought about today's episode somewhere on the internet. Once again, a big thank you to Kadikaris for being here on the show. If you want to check out his channel, there's a link on screen right now. And hey, I think he has a video that he did on Heart of Darkness from a while ago. You can check that out as well. Guys, I've been Gerard the Completionist, and I'll see you next week for another brand new episode. Bye-bye.